I am Laura Dixon, and you are listening to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast, episode number 93, Love for the Scale. Welcome to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast. I'm going to teach you how to get out of your diet brain so that you too can be naturally thin for life. No counting, restricting, or obsessing. I am going to take the mystery out of it for you so that you can become naturally thin starting today. Are you ready? Let's do this. Friends, welcome back to the podcast. I cannot wait to talk with all of you about the scale. This simple little thing that sits in your bathroom that so many of us have so many negative thoughts and feelings about. Today, we're going to put all of that behind you so that you can use the scale as a tool to help you. Before we dive in, if you're enjoying the podcast and getting a lot out of it, if you could take a minute to write a review and leave a review, that would be amazing. That helps the podcast reach more women like you, and it helps us all put an end to the obsessive dieting and gain the freedom of being naturally thin when this just isn't something on your mind all of the time. So thank you for taking a minute to do that, to leave a review, write a review, and make sure to subscribe so you're always getting the latest episodes. The scale. How many of you have gotten on the scale? And it either makes or breaks your day. You're either ecstatic and elated because it maybe went down two or three pounds and maybe you weren't expecting that, or it breaks your day and you're devastated. Everyone? Is everyone like nodding along? I feel like anyone that's ever dieted or used the scale or tried to use weight has had this experience where it either makes or breaks your day. That was my relationship with the scale too, until one day I decided I'm just going to give it all up and I'm not going to get on the scale anymore. (laughs) I thought I was doing myself this really big favor. I was not doing myself a favor, and I'm going to explain to you why that was. And shocker, I ended up putting on a bunch of weight. I would tell myself, no, I'll just know by the way my pants fit. And then my pants would be tight for a while, and I'd be like, I think I just need to poop, or I'm a little bloated, or I would kind of just make up these lies (laughs) to tell myself. Because here's the thing. All of your negative thoughts that you have about the scale are there in your brain, regardless of whether or not you get on the scale. If you don't use the scale, it's like you're sweeping all of those negative thoughts under the rug and just telling yourself they don't exist instead of taking a look at them so that you can actually change them for good. I talk more about this in episode five, Overcoming Scale Fear, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time talking about it again here, but I am going to remind you all of how important this really is. When you get on the scale, remember, the scale doesn't do anything to you. It just displays a number. The scale has a number, tells you the gravitational pull on your body. That's it. And then you, your brain, has thoughts about that number like, I'm never going to lose this weight. This shouldn't be so hard for me. I hate the way I look. This is just too hard. I want to give up. When you have those thoughts, remember, your thoughts then create your feelings in your body. So you have those types of thoughts and then you might feel emotions like hopeless, trapped, devastated, ashamed, disgusted, defeated. And when this happens over and over again, and you don't see that your thoughts are creating your feelings, what happens then is your brain associates the scale with those negative emotions, even though the scale is not what's creating these feelings in your body. It's your brain's interpretation of the number on the scale, which is the thought in your brain that's creating the feelings in your body, the sentences running through your mind. These thoughts are in your brain regardless of whether or not you get on the scale. The scale doesn't like inject thoughts into your brain. They're already there. A thought like this, I'm never going to get to my goal when you see a particular number on the scale, that thought 
I'm never going to get to my goal is there in your brain, no matter if you get on the scale or not. And so you actually want to know that it's there. (laughs) If you don't know that it's there, what happens is, is it just sits there buzzing around in your brain because you didn't gain the awareness. And then that thought, you're not going to go to change it because you don't even know it's there in the first place. You think the scale is just creating your feelings. And then that thought that's just buzzing around there, I'm never going to get to my goal, creates a feeling in your body for you. Your thoughts create your feelings and your feelings drive all of your action and inaction. And then of course, all of your action and inaction, all of your behavior produces the results you have in your life. So if you're walking around not really aware that you have the thought, I'm never going to get to my goal because you told yourself, I just don't want to get on the scale. It's too hard. But instead, you're just walking around thinking all the time, I'm never going to get to my goal, kind of subconsciously. And then you're feeling defeated. That's still there. And that feeling of defeated is going to be the predominant emotion driving your action. Whether or not you're aware of it, it's happening. And guess what feeling defeated does when you feel defeated most of the time? It has you overeating. It has you not listening to your body. It has you giving up. And then shocker, the result you have is you don't reach your goal. Sort of like your thoughts create your results. You're thinking, you're walking around all the time, I'm not going to get to my goal, creating a vibration of feeling defeated in your body. And when you feel defeated, then you start overeating. You're not listening to your body. You're ignoring your cues. You're telling yourself it's not going to work anyways. And you don't actually get to your goal. And then we do this crazy thing to ourselves. We're like, see, I'm just a person that's never going to reach my goal. I guess I can just never be naturally thin. No not true at all. You just have a thought that you're not aware of and that you haven't changed yet. That's it. And the scale is this beautiful thing. It will show you what negative thoughts are there that are creating the results you don't want so that you can change them to create the results you do want. When you get on the scale And this is something I teach in detail in the Naturally Thin for Life program. And I teach everyone in the program how to do this specifically. So if you want to learn more about how to do this, if you want to really learn to love the scale, to use the scale as a tool beyond what you hear today, make sure to join us there. But when you get on the scale, I want to give you some things to think about and to do with this podcast episode. I want you to think about when you get on the scale, it's like flushing up to the surface all of the negative thoughts that are already in your brain, that you're already thinking about your body and your weight. Think about like a box of thoughts in your subconscious and you get on the scale and then it's like opening the box and you get to see, oh, these are all of the things that I'm thinking all of the time. Even though I might not be aware that I'm thinking them at 2 p.m. in the afternoon when I'm working, they're still there in my brain. And when you flush all of those thoughts up to the surface, then you get to have awareness of what those thoughts are. You get a handle on them. You get to see them. And then from there, you can deliberately change them on purpose to create a permanent change. You cannot create a permanent change if you don't actually change the way your brain thinks. And if you don't know what negative thoughts are creating your self-sabotaging behavior, you will never be able to create the ease and effortlessness of being naturally thin because you will always be battling those negative thoughts. You have to actually change those negative thoughts. And the only way to change them is to first know what they are. The scale is a fabulous tool to help you do that. You literally get on this little piece of metal. It gives you a number And then it gets to do all of that for you. It triggers all of these negative thoughts in your brain. It doesn't cause them. It just flushes them up to the surface. And then what I suggest you do is write down all of those thoughts about whatever that number is today, knowing that that number isn't creating those sentences in your brain. It isn't like injecting the thought, I'm never going to get to my goal. It's already there. It's just coming out of the cobwebs, coming up to the surface so that you can see it, you can be aware of it, and that you can deliberately decide to change it. And the other thing I want you to remember is if you fear the scale, it is only because you expect 
to have an uncomfortable emotion when you get on the scale. Whatever the emotion is that's going to come from some of those negative thoughts, that's why you fear the scale. You fear that emotion. You don't actually fear the number. You just fear the emotion your brain has associated with a particular number. So go back to the how to feel episode, use what I teach you there and get on the scale and simply allow that uncomfortable feeling in your body, that vibration to be there so that then you can see what are the thoughts in my brain that aren't serving me so that I can go to work to change them. If you don't take the time to do this, guess what happens? You lie to yourself telling yourself that the number on the scale has this power to create or influence your thoughts or feelings. It doesn't at all. How we know this to be true is that if every single person lost weight, we would never put it back on, not one of us, because the scale would be able to magically change the way we think. It doesn't. That's why so many of us lose weight, we put it back on, because the scale has no power over the thoughts in our brain. We have to actually change the way we think on purpose and then the scale becomes a permanent change. The scale is the result of a permanent change when it goes down or when it goes up. It doesn't influence the way we think. We think and then we influence the scale. So that's the first part, really understanding that the scale doesn't create your thoughts. It doesn't create your feelings. You create your feelings with the sentences in your brain, with the thoughts that you choose to think about that number on the scale. And as long as you think the scale has this power or control over any of your emotions, you think that that scale has any ability to impact the way you think and feel, you will always feel out of control with your weight. You want to know what negative thoughts are already in your brain. And the scale is simply a brilliant way to flush them up to the surface so that you can understand them, be aware of them, and change them. The scale is a tool, and I choose to love the scale. I mean, I really love the scale. When I stopped getting on the scale, it was only because I actually hated the scale, because I felt out of control, because I didn't see the scale as a tool. It had this power over me. The more you use the scale in the way I talk about it in this episode as a tool to understand the thoughts in your mind so that you can change those thoughts that aren't serving you, and you see the scale as a tool to get to know your body better, to get to actually trust your body better, you use the scale as a tool to listen to your body You obsess about the number less, you feel less attached to it, and you feel more in control. You love the scale for it simply being a tool that sits on your bathroom floor. You know those people in your life you have a relationship with where there's no dependency, there's no attachment, and you just love them deeply. It's this easy, magical relationship, and it just doesn't take a lot of work. That's how I think about my love for the scale. It's simply a tool to help me. The scale and I, we have this beautiful, amazing relationship where I just get to get on. I see a number and I use it to understand my brain. I use it to understand my body and to build more trust with myself, to feel more in control with an ease and an effortlessness that I would love for all of you to have as well. At the end of the day, It is just this little metal thing that shows a number. The scale doesn't care what number it says, by the way. It just gives you a number. You get to take that information and you get to decide to think whatever you want. I think about it a little bit like my phone. I have an iPhone. I choose to love my iPhone. I think it's a miraculous tool. I never tell myself, oh, it's so annoying to have this phone. When I look at the phone and it tells me the temperature that it's going to be outside today, I get really annoyed. No, it's like this mega computer. It can do all of these things. I just choose to love it. And here's the funny thing. For some of you that weigh your food, but not your body, when your goal is to lose weight, how crazy is that? So let's stop weighing your food. Let's instead weigh your body if your goal is to lose weight. And then let's use that number on the scale 
to help you. Use the scale to serve you. I cannot think of a good reason not to love the scale. The only reason you would choose not to love the scale is because you don't see it as a tool. You don't know how to use it to help you. You're giving it way too much power if you don't love the scale. When you love the scale in this way that I'm going to help you learn to love in just a minute, you have all of the control. You have all of the power. You get to know yourself better. The scale really does become this little thing that just sits in the bathroom. So here are some things that you can do to get started loving the scale as a tool to help you. I tell all of my clients in Naturally Thin for Life, get on the scale twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. And here's why. You get to see how much it fluctuates really quickly. Your brain sees that number changing multiple pounds in less than a 24-hour period. You do this every day and your brain will become so unattached to that number on the scale, it will start to see that number as a tool to understand your body. For some people, this happens in a matter of like two days. It happens so quickly. Your brain starts to associate, oh, the scale, it gives me a number. It changes. It totally doesn't change based on calories in, calories out. Because when I got on this morning, it was maybe 162. And when I got on this evening, it was 168. Like I did not eat, right? Six pounds extra today. It's just my body fluctuating. You get to know your body. You get to understand those fluctuations. And I'm going to give you some examples of how to do that in a minute. But you want to get on the scale, especially in the beginning. Just get on twice a day. You will actually create so much freedom and less obsessing when you do this. Do not do the once a week weigh-in thing. This is the worst idea ever. I absolutely hate this. Anytime anyone talks about a weigh-in, I just like my whole body cringes. I'm like, no, don't do it. (laughs) You put so much pressure on yourself for that one day weigh-in. And then you don't get to see the daily fluctuations. You don't get to see how the scale fluctuates every single day. You don't get the real-time feedback on your body and it's all so focused on the Monday weigh-in or whatever it is. And then let's say you are ovulating on a Wednesday and your weekly weigh-in, maybe let's say in this example, it's on a Friday. And the scale might go up for your weekly weigh-in on a Friday because you are ovulating. Or maybe it was because of the food you ate, or maybe it was because of how you slept, but you don't really know what it is. It's hard to know because you're trying to understand an entire week's decisions around food, an entire week's decisions around sleep, an entire week of what's happening in your body physiologically, maybe with your cycle. It's really hard to know what has happened in that entire week when you're not checking in every single day. You might not even know when you're weighing yourself only once a week, you might not even have the awareness that, oh, I put on four pounds every time I ovulate. If you're not weighing yourself every day, when you weigh yourself every day and you see, oh, about two weeks after my cycle starts every single month, I always have two to three days where the scale goes up. And I know it has nothing to do with what I ate. It's just where I am in my cycle. Think about how you understand your body in a completely new way. The scale helps you trust your body. The scale helps you get to know your body. And this isn't possible in the same way, in the same depth, with the same trust and understanding and knowledge of your body when you're not using the scale at all or if you're only using it once a week. I remember realizing for me personally, when I am ovulating, it's like a four pound weight gain every single month. And now I just expect it. I'm like, oh yeah, I think really soon I'm going to see the scale go up. I actually can feel it in my body happening a day or two before. And then I notice the scale go up and I'm like, yep, I think I'm ovulating. And I'm like, what? How great is it that I get to know my body that well? Or maybe you get more real-time feedback with sleep and you definitely get more real-time feedback with how you are eating. A woman in the Naturally Thin for Life program was saying recently, she said, sometimes I see a seven pound difference between morning and evening. And she was saying this and sharing this on one of our live calls. And she was saying it just reminds her of how our bodies change so much in a day. What a good reminder to ourselves, especially when we're used to obsessing and counting and doing all the things that 
she was like, obviously, there's no way I ate seven pounds of food today, right? That's just my body has some fluctuations. It is not simply calories in and calories out. And the scale helps you see this so clearly. And of course, you also then when you're using the scale every day, and when you're using the scale twice a day, which is what I recommend, especially in the beginning to really accelerate your detachment from that number on the scale, is you get real time feedback about the food you eat. So for example, when I eat gluten, my body swells. It gets a little bloated. When I first started noticing this, I would eat gluten and I would maybe have a slight headache or just not feel as comfortable as I wanted to in my body. And it felt really subtle. And I thought, you know, maybe my body doesn't love gluten. Maybe I'm not totally sure what it was. Maybe it was something else I ate. And then I started noticing a pattern. I would get on the scale the next morning after I ate gluten, or maybe even in that evening if I was really curious and weighing myself twice a day, and see, whoa, that's a lot higher than it was 12 hours ago, right? That reaffirms what I thought might be true. My body isn't responding to gluten in a way that it's telling me, oh, I love this. We feel so great. I feel a little bloated, so I would feel the physical discomfort, and I sort of would know I don't feel quite the way I want to feel. And then I would get on the scale, and that scale would reaffirm what I thought. It would actually increase the trust I had with myself because I would tell myself, yeah, you know, I thought that was true, and it seems like it is. This little metal thing that sits in my bathroom, when I see the higher number, it tells me, yeah, I think, you know, it might be the gluten that's doing this. And then I would notice a pattern of this every time I would eat gluten. And so now, I feel way more physical discomfort when I eat gluten just because my brain is so trained to notice how I feel physically in my body because the scale has allowed me to listen to my body on a deeper level. So try it. Get on the scale twice a day. Do it for a month. And notice how you completely detach from that number on the scale. Notice how in just two or three days, your relationship with the scale can do a complete 180 in a way that you will get to know your body like you never have before. And decide how you want to think about the scale so that you use it as both a tool to understand the negative thoughts that are already buzzing around in your brain so you can flush them up to the surface and gain awareness around them and change them, and also decide how do you want to think about the scale deliberately. I'm pregnant when I'm recording this, probably not anymore by the time you listen to it, and I weigh myself when I'm pregnant. And I think it's so fascinating to me that I put weight in several pound chunks on from about eight weeks to about 25 weeks, and then it sort of plateaus. The baby is getting bigger, clearly, from 25 weeks to 40 weeks. When I'm recording this, I'm like 35 weeks. I haven't put much weight on in the last five, seven, eight weeks. And I don't get much bigger me in total physically, but the baby's totally getting bigger. They're measuring the baby. It's so fascinating. I just think it's so interesting. And then I think back and I'm like, oh, you know what? That was the same with Ben and Gemma too. My body just seems to put on the weight in the first two trimesters. So when I was pregnant with Ben, my first... I remember having this experience in the third trimester and kind of like freaking out. And the midwife was like, actually, it's quite normal. Like you put on a very healthy amount of weight, like not concerned at all. The baby's growing. We measure the baby. She had like no concern. And because I took the time to understand that with my first pregnancy, then when I was pregnant with Gemma, I was like, oh, pattern again. I guess that is just what my body does when I'm pregnant. And now with this third baby, I'm like, I just expected it don't really have any drama about it. I'm just like, yep, that's just what my body does. I get to know my body in such an intense, loving way because I use the scale as a tool to help me and to understand myself. So like the example I gave you earlier, you might notice you put on a few pounds when you ovulate or when you start your cycle, right? Or you may notice when the scale goes down a couple of pounds, maybe a couple days into your cycle, whatever it is. You may notice that you lose weight easier when you sleep more. You get real-time feedback about particular foods as well. Or you get real-time feedback of what does the scale do if you eat closer to bedtime or earlier in the afternoon? How does it affect the scale if you eat more in the middle of the day or more in the evening? And then from that information, 
You get to make more informed decisions where you're honest with yourself. Think about the scales like helping you see all of the information so that you can make really clean, clear, honest decisions to serve you, to help you reach your goal. For example, for me, I know if I eat tortilla chips at a restaurant, the scale will go up in the morning. Almost 100% of the time, even if they are gluten-free, which they often are. Here's the beauty in this. Because I know that about my body and I go to a restaurant, I may decide, yep, you know what? I'm going to have some tortilla chips. And I know full well, I'm being really honest with myself, the scale's going to go up tomorrow and I'm okay with that. Then I eat them. I don't regret eating them. I'm not like sort of subconsciously thinking, well, I mean, I hope the scale doesn't go up. It sort of kind of does sometimes. I'm like, nope, it's just going to go up. There's no drama in my mind. I'm like, yep, I'm going to eat them. It's going to go up. I'm not going to regret it. I'm going to enjoy them. And then guess what? The next morning I get on the scale and I see that it goes up and I know exactly why. It's not a surprise. I don't then have a bunch of negative thoughts about I'm never going to get to my goal. I'm going to put all this weight back on. I'm like, no, I ate the tortilla chips. That's why. I made that decision knowing full well. It doesn't then have this devastating effect. There's no drama and I just see and know exactly what happened. Or maybe I decide, you know what? I want to feel light and airy tonight. I don't want to feel a little bloated in the morning. So I'm not going to eat the tortilla chips because I know when I do, that's what happens. Then I don't eat the tortilla chips and then maybe the scale stays the same or maybe it goes down a little and I'm like, yep. I know why, because I ate this and this instead of eating the tortilla chips. It's as simple as that. The scale helps you feel more in control of your weight, not less, because you understand exactly why you gain weight. You understand exactly why you lose weight. And then you can be really honest with yourself about your food choices, knowing full well how they impact your weight loss. And remember, when you know how to feel your feelings, and you understand the only thing between you and eating the food that feels amazing in your body, that allows you to feel the way you want to feel in your body, the only thing between you and that is an emotion, and you have the skill of letting those emotions run through your body without fighting them, you've achieved weight loss magic. It becomes so easy. You understand exactly how food responds in your body, and you know the only thing between you and eating the way you want to eat is always an emotion, and you know how to feel. It really is that simple to make losing weight easy. Here are some of my thoughts about the scale. You can borrow these thoughts. You can practice these thoughts, but I really suggest that you find thoughts that you can fully believe right now. If you can't totally believe the thoughts I'm going to give you here, find some thoughts in the middle. Like maybe I want to love the scale. Maybe you don't love the scale right now, but maybe you want to. But here are my thoughts about the scale. I love the scale. I use the scale to get to know my body better. The scale helps me understand my body. The scale is a tool that serves me. The scale is simply objective data. I use the scale to increase the trust I have with my body always. Then when I do get on the scale and I see a number, the most common thought I have is, yep, that's what I thought it would be. Do you know how much confidence you have in your ability to lose weight and keep it off when you get on the scale over and over again? And now you think, yep, that's just what I thought it would be. You lose the fear of ever putting weight back on when you always know why you weigh what you weigh and you really know. Not just, oh yeah, I ate a little bit too much yesterday. That's why I went up. Or, oh yeah, it went down a little bit because I skipped dinner yesterday. But you know exactly what foods. You know exactly what was happening in your body the day before or the week before or the multiple weeks before. You know the patterns and how you feel before you eat. And you know how you feel when you're done eating. And you know what food really serves your body. You know all of that in such an intense amount of detail because you use the scale to serve you, you have so much confidence in your ability to lose weight that you have no fear of it ever coming back. You have this calm freedom that is so liberating. 
And if I don't have the thought, oh yeah, that's what I thought it would be, right? I thought it'd be the same. I thought it'd be a little bit less than it is. I thought it'd be a little bit more and it is. It just is like, you always know what it is. If that's not what's going through my mind, then it really is one of kind of two thoughts. A thought like, oh, that's interesting. I wonder why. I'll be really curious. Either it goes up or down. Again, now I'm pregnant and I think back now, I will see my brain be like, oh, that's interesting. It hasn't changed in a while. And then like I was saying earlier, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. I'm 35 weeks pregnant. This is about what happens. It doesn't really move much, especially when I'm not eating food that I expect to cause weight gain or I expect to maybe allow my body to lose a little bit of weight. And if I don't think, yep, that's what I was expecting, or, huh, I wonder why, and be really curious, I may have a thought like, huh, that's a little weird, like I wasn't expecting that. And then I'll get back to curiosity, like I wonder what caused that. And I'm curious, and I reflect, and maybe I find an answer, or maybe I think, huh, that's weird, I'll just see if that happens again and see if I find a pattern. I'm not thinking, oh, and I have to figure this out, and this is so torturous, and I don't understand, and putting all this pressure on myself. I either have curiosity because maybe I'm not quite sure. Maybe I have an inkling and I'm like, let's just see if this pattern comes up again. So I either have that sense of curiosity or I have certainty when I get on the scale. That's it. Curiosity, certainty. Not fear, not obsession, not panic, not hopeless, and not ecstatic or elated or excited either. The scale and I have this really calm, lovely relationship. That's it. And here's the other thing I want to say before we end this episode is that it's okay to be disappointed and learning. Maybe you have an inkling, like I know when I get on the scale today, it's going to go up because I did eat those tortilla chips last night and you're a little like, oh, I wish it wouldn't have, right? Do not then not get on the scale. Do not have that inkling and think, oh, I think it did go up a little bit and then avoid the scale. That is not what you want to do. Here's what you want to do. You want to get on the scale, reaffirm what you thought to be true. And it's okay to feel a little disappointed, like, oh, that's a bummer. I kind of thought maybe if I ate those tortilla chips, the scale was going to go up. And I didn't actually didn't want the scale to go up. So, you know, next time I know this, but I do feel a little disappointed right now. You're not going to beat yourself up and create a lot of shame for yourself. But maybe then you think, you know what? It actually wasn't worth it to me to eat those chips. I didn't enjoy them as much as I thought. I now am a little bit bloated. The scale did go up. And now then, when you have that experience, rather than avoiding the scale and also not beating the crap out of yourself, but you're a little disappointed. It's a little bit of a bummer. It's okay to have that experience. Because then you have the honesty with yourself. You understand how your body responds to those chips. So the next time you're presented with those chips, you make a more honest choice. If you skip this, if you skip getting on the scale, you skip acknowledging the disappointment. It's like sweeping it all under the rug. And then you go to the restaurant the next time and you sort of pretend, oh, it'll be fine. And you aren't really honest with yourself. And then again, you don't really enjoy the chips because you know deep down, if you were being honest with yourself, the scale would go up and you don't want the scale to go up. It's like you're trying to hide this whole thing from yourself. The whole experience sucks and you really know the truth anyways. So be honest with yourself. Just get on the scale. See that it went up a little bit. Understand why so that you can be even more honest with yourself. Trust yourself more. Make a more informed, clear, honest decision the next time. Your ability to trust your body, to listen to your body, and feel the way you want to feel in your body gross. If you're trying to sweep any of this under the rug, it's like you aren't allowing your brain and your body to have the strongest, deepest connection with each other. And remember, the scale doesn't create any of this. It just is a tool to help you get to a place where you do trust your body. You do understand your body. You know how to listen to your body even better. Because the more honest you are, with yourself, around how you feel in your body, around your hunger, around your food choices, around how all of that impacts the scale, the more honest you are with yourself, the easier and easier it is to lose weight. So friends, join me. 
choose to love the scale, you will build so much trust with yourself. You will feel so much more freedom than avoiding it. And you will be astounded at how well you get to know your own body in a very short period of time. If you want help gaining awareness and changing your thoughts about the scale, and you want to have this really deep, lovely relationship, drama-free relationship with the scale, make sure to join us in the Naturally Thin for Life program where you learn not only how to have the relationship with the scale that you love, a relationship with the scale that creates no fear of ever putting weight back on, but you also learn many more tools not taught here on the podcast specifically around how to change those thoughts that aren't serving you when you do get on the scale initially. So if you want help with that, listen to the outro for more information information on how to join us there. All right, friends, have an amazing day. I will talk with you all next week. Friends, if you are loving what you are learning here on the podcast, you have to come check out my Naturally Thin for Life program. It is my on-demand lifetime access program where I teach you brand new concepts not taught here on the podcast. And I will walk you through exactly how to implement all of the tools I teach you here so that they become just a part of you. You will learn exactly how to understand your specific brain and your specific body so that you become naturally thin for the rest of your life and you no longer struggle with your weight. Inside of the Naturally Thin for Life program, you can also receive live help so that you consistently make progress and reach your goal. I will teach you how to accelerate your naturally thin journey in a sustainable way so that the change becomes permanent. The best part is that it's risk-free. You either love it or I will give you your money back. If you are ready to finally be naturally thin for life, join us at lauradixoncoaching.com forward slash work with me. That's L-A-U-R-A-D-I-X-O-N coaching.com and click on the work with me tab. I cannot wait to see you there.